Well, on, on the note of how much it costs, you will want to call your own insurance hotline <coughs> to find out what sleep specialist you can work with and what it's going to cost you and how much they're going to cover because until you do that it's going to be uh, a little bit more well some more uncertainties financially if you if you don't check that out first you know we're very fortunate in the mid-south uh, uh, regardless of your insurance plan there are several really fine accredited sleep labs uh, in this community and, it, and we all know each other uh, and we usually have no problems with insurance plans changing from having someone go to some to another sleep lab that's mm -hmm. you know that's covered by their insurance company. Right. Good to know. Good to know. The uh, one last thing I want to touch on about the sleep tests is that once you are treated for your apnea or whatever sleep disorder, you have to come in for a follow up because can can you can things change? Can they get better? Can they get worse while they're being treated for apnea? Uh, we usually will see people. If they're being treated for something, either a follow-up evaluation or a follow-up just how they're being treated. If you're on CPAP, uh, generally speaking, if it's you had a lot of apnea, we want to recheck your pressure because often you can have the pressure lowered. Exactly. The lower the pressure is, the more comfortable it's going to be, the more likely you're going to wear it. Exactly. Uh, and then sometimes we don't necessarily want to have a test done. We just want to talk to, the, to whoever's being treated. Well, do you feel better? Mm -hmm. The proof's in the pudding. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing something you're not doing better, I'm doing something wrong or what I'm doing needs to be adjusted. Exactly. So the follow-up starts out with an office visit too. You just come in to talk about how things are going. Right. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> here's some things that are um, available. We just you just mentioned CPAP, which is continuous positive airway pressure. I always think I'm going to botch that, and uh, we're going to talk a whole lot more about that in another show. But there are other things. I can't tell you how many people I hear say they just want to forget that whole CPAP thing and they just want to get surgery. What's wrong with that? Surgery doesn't work in everybody. And generally speaking, and this is a generalization, the worse your apnea is, the less likely surgery's going to help. There's a number of different surgeries uh, from correcting nasal septal deviation, right. removing the adenoids and or the tonsils, mm -hmm. tongue reduction, mm -hmm. removal of the uvula. Uh, there's some procedures that can be done in the office. There's somnoplasty, which is a reduction of tissue in the roof of the mouth. Mm -hmm. There's, there is a place for surgery. Right. Uh, it's important that it depends on how bad your apnea is, and it depends on what your ear, nose, and throat physician sees when he looks in your throat. Mm -hmm. Someone like me, all I can see is what I can see with my right in the back mm -hmm. of your throat. Mm -hmm. A good ENT evaluation, the uh, ear, nose, and throat physician has a little flexible scope, and he can see everything. Wow. So it's dependent on how bad the apnea is and what he sees and what he thinks can be corrected. Yeah, I just want to dispel with the public the notion that surgery is the first way to go. Believe me, I've seen um, people who've had this and the recuperation time, it's pretty serious. It works where it's um, anatomically appropriate for right. that patient, but everybody isn't suited for that. I think in our minds we just think surgery will cure everything. Right. Um, okay, also weight loss is important. Is important. But if it's going to be, and I, I know very little about weight loss, but if it works, my experience is it's gradual. Mm -hmm. If you're going to lose weight, it's going to be a gradual process with a reasonable diet and a reasonable exercise program. Mm -hmm. And the apnea will get better. It won't necessarily completely go away. Mm -hmm. So you still need to look at that. Right. Um, also, what about just sinuses? Can I tell you how miserable a person can be when their sinuses are just bugged? Right. So what, I mean, how do you know that's the problem since all these things are happening between here and here, here and here? Well, it's not so much just that you have a sinus infection, it's what the sinus infection is doing to the structure of your throat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, first and foremost, first, is that your nose is blocked off because you have a sinus infection, so your mouth's up when you sleep, so you're going to have more apnea. Secondly, uh, if you have an infection, if you still have your tonsils and adenoids, they swell. When they oh. swell, they close right. things off. Right. So it's not so much just the sinus infection, it's what the sinus infection is doing by making things above the opening of your windpipe swell mm -hmm. and making the passage the air has to go through even smaller. Exactly. The last thing I want to mention is alcohol consumption because that kind of wrecks uh, people who already have apnea.
right. because the relaxation of those muscles just creates more of a problem there, so it can be really dangerous. Well, today we've had a long discussion about sleep apnea, and there will be more on the treatment for that later. So um, if you will tune in next time, we're going to talk about things that go bump in the night. And the curious thing is it might be you. So um, thank you for tuning in to The Power of Sleep. Thank you, Dr. Aguilar, you for much. being with us today, and we'll see you next time. WYPL-TV18 was proud to present The Power of Sleep. Sponsored by Methodist Sleep Disorder Center. Offering free community education seminars Tuesday, April 21st and Tuesday, July 14th at the Jewish Community Center. Each seminar features a physician speaking on an important sleep-related topic. Admission is free. The seminars begin at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, April 21st and Tuesday, July 14th. More information can be found at www.methodisthealth.org or 901-683-0044. Methodist Healthcare, embracing the miracle of life.